This is a Raspberry Pi computer, and one just like it is running this robot right here. But what's really neat is it's also hosting a Wi-Fi hotspot, doing DNS resolution, and running a Python Flask-based web page that controls this robot. And what that means is, I can connect to weeder.local slash run from my phone here and tell it what to do. So, this is a really useful setup that could be extended to all sorts of Pi projects, not just this robot. So, let's see how to set up a Pi to do all this sort of stuff. This is a Raspberry Pi 02W, and it's what we'll be using in this project. Um, it's, if you're unfamiliar, it's just a tiny computer. It's really inexpensive. Uh, we're going to be connecting wires to these little metal pins here, and um, you're going to have to create the hard drive for this thing. When you get it, it won't boot up. You have to take a micro SD card and flash Raspbian OS on it and insert it into this little thing here. So let's jump over and see what we're going to flash on here. To download this from the Raspberry Pi website, just Google Raspberry Pi Imager, put it on your machine. Uh, your device is going to be a Raspberry Pi 0 2W, so that's this guy right here. Uh, your operating system, we're going to go to the other operating system. We are going to choose the 64-bit Lite. So there's a 64-bit full. Here's a Raspberry Pi 64-bit Lite. This is so we can get as much processing power uh, for image processing as we can. And uh, obviously, you're going to choose whatever SD card you've got plugged into your laptop here. Now, on the, you are going to customize the settings. Come over here, um, give it a host name, give it a username and password, and be sure that you put the correct SSID, that's your wireless uh, internet uh, network name, and the correct password, because this thing's going to automatically connect. Um, and then over here under services, say you enable SSH, use password authentication, save, and you want to apply that. You've just so, finished uh, flashing your Raspberry Pi SD card, and you plug that new fresh SD card in right here, and then you power up your Raspberry Pi. You've got two options for powering it. Uh, you can do what I did here, which is five volt and ground coming into the GPIO pins, and that is powered off of our DC buck converter. So 12 volts goes in, five volts comes out. Um, alternatively, you could just plug a micro USB into the micro USB port right there, just you know, a wall plug, just like what you use to power your cell phone or charge up your cell phone, you can plug that into there. So two options to get it powered on. Wait about a minute, it's gonna go through two or three reboots while it's getting itself set up. Um, now, when you want to access the thing, you again have two options. The first one is what you see here. This is a, a, a cable, uh, a, a mini HDMI cable, and you, if you have, if you want to go, you know, keyboard, video, mouse, you're going to have to have some sort of hub like this. This is a, a micro USB. It'll plug into the other port, you know, right there, and you can put your keyboard and mouse on that. And then when you plug it in, you're going to get a screen that looks about like this. This is, um, you know, the login screen, put in your username and password, and you have local access to this thing. It's just like any other computer. But you probably don't have a mini HDMI and a, a USB hanging around like this. So we're going to work on the second option, which is, you know, what we're going to end up doing anyway. We're going to connect to this thing over Wi-Fi. So you don't need any of that extra stuff. You don't need to plug anything else into your Raspberry Pi. You just log in via Wi-Fi. Let's go have a look. When you flashed your Raspberry Pi, you actually gave it a, your SSID for your Wi-Fi and your password. So the first thing it does is it logs onto your pass to your Wi-Fi, um, and that means that your Wi-Fi router gives it a 192.168.0. something IP address. So log into your Wi-Fi router as the administrator and figure out what that IP address is. Then you can connect to it over your Wi-Fi with that IP address. First things first, how are you going to connect to this thing? Uh, SSH is a program, uh, Secure Shell. If you don't, if you if you're running Windows, you're going to have to download Putty, and I'll show you on Windows here what it looks like. If you are running Mac or Linux, you've already got SSH installed. So pull up a command line, and you're going to use a command like this: SSH, whatever username you've got, the IP address. So that's the first thing. Get a program that you can use to connect to this. It'll be Putty or SSH. So let me show you what that looks like here. Um, I'm going to pull up a new uh, Putty, and for me. I looked it up and uh, my address is 162.168.0.115. So you just plop that in right here. It's gonna connect over port 22. You say open and sure enough, it opens one of these panels where you can log in with your username and password. Now you've got your uh, fresh install of Raspberry Pi uh, operating system on an SD card. You've plugged it in. You've got the IP address uh, or you've you know, plugged your keyboard video mouse in. In other words, you're connected to the Raspberry Pi. You can issue commands to it just like this. Um, so if we look around here, uh, we're just sitting in our home directory. There's nothing in there. 
So um, all of the setup to get our robot running has, has been automated. And that is automated on this page over here. Um, so if we look, this is the Nathan Builds DIY GitHub repository. Uh, and it's a project called Weeder. And I'm looking at the readme file. It's the, the um, how to get things set up. The very first thing here is um, sometimes when you log in, doesn't happen this time, but about, I'd say, one in three, maybe one in five, uh, I get really slow response times from my Raspberry Pi. It, it'll take a minute or more um, between login and giving me a prompt. And so if that happens to you, you can grab this command right here and just paste it in and then hit enter. And what that does is it adds these words right here into this file right here. And then you can reboot your Pi, you know, un unplug it, plug it back in. The next time you log in, you'll get good response times. So if that happens to you, go ahead and, and paste that in. Um, just a little trick. Next, we go back to over here and uh, it says install git. What we're, Git is just a, a, uh, it's a way of, of version control, software control. Um, where you can keep track of everything. It's used all over the world. Uh, if you don't know about it, go, go read a bit. Um, but what we're doing is we're installing Git on this Raspberry Pi here, and that way we can download the uh, GitHub that we were just looking at, like the whole project. So the next command is we'll download that whole thing to this uh, clone it is the, is the correct word. Okay, so Git has been installed, and the next step in this readme here is say, it says clone this Git repository to your Raspberry Pi. So if we drop that over here, oh, still installing, I guess. So if we paste that command over here, git clone uh, that repository that we were just looking at, it's going to clone that Weeder project to our Raspberry Pi. So now when we look, there's a directory called Weeder, and if we look inside Weeder, there's all those same files that we saw over here um, on the Raspberry Pi, and I'll be able to update this as you know I update things. Uh, the things that actually got copied down are um, the setup script, uh, IP tables rules, and then these two right here, this weed killer and model int, these are the things that will actually run our program. Um, this model is the TF Lite model for image classification. You will actually rebuild this later so that you have your own customized one. And then this is just, uh, it, it runs the robot, you know, give, tells it what to do. So uh, the next step, according to our GitHub repository, is um, we're going to run our initial setup script here. And if we want to look at the output, we can issue this tail.f nohup.out. Um, we're going to run this as a nohup because there are some network configuration steps at the end of this. And if you are connected over SSH, it's going to disconnect. Um, so if we tail dash F no hub, you'll see that this thing is working in the background. Um, and so it's doing a bunch of stuff to set up the Pi on our behalf. Um, so anyway, this no hub part, if you're not familiar with it, you're going to get disconnected if you're connected over SSH and you want the script to keep running after you get disconnected. This ensures that the script will keep running even when you get disconnected because the network gets restarted. So um, this, this is why we run it this way. Now, let's just go take a quick look at what's in this script. So if we jump back to our GitHub repository and we look at the initial setup, we can actually see what's happening in here um, that we're tailing the output there. And it's worth just having an idea of what's going on. First thing is we just update all the packages that are on there. This uh, says, you know, go get updates for whatever is on the install. Uh, second, we install some new packages. Um, so we install pip and python. These are the, um, pip is the installation manager for python. And this is a special version of python. When I put python 3 on initially, um, the camera did not work. There was some library conflicts. And somebody on Stack Overflow pointed out that this special version of python, specific to the uh, Raspberry Pi 02W, um, when you're running a 64-bit operating system, this one will get your camera working. It's Otherwise, it's the same as just a normal Python 3. Uh, various other libraries, I put real Vim on there. Um, and then if we scroll down a little further, we get into more. The, the reason I put real Vim on there, by the way, is if you use VI to edit things, the pre-installed one doesn't show Python properly. This will show Python properly. Um, next, we get to all of the PIP3 stuff for um, our image classification. So this is open computer vision. TF Lite, support and runtime, and then Immutils. And these are all, um, well, the top and bottom are computer vision uh, libraries that help us do things like 
uh, analyze images, find contrasting regions, etc. And then TF Lite actually runs our, uh, our TensorFlow model. We're going to create a TensorFlow model, which is Google's image, well, Google's uh, AI or machine learning um, platform. We're going to use TF Lite, which is a lighter version of that model because we don't have a lot of processing power on this thing. And so these are the libraries that will let us load that uh, TensorFlow Lite model to do image classification. A little bit further down here, we install PyGPIO and we get it running on a daemon, so every time it starts, PyGPIO is running. This allows much finer control of our servo motors. It does a better job of creating the uh, pulse width modulated wave that controls those servo motors. Servo motors. Next, um, we install DNS Mask and DNS Utils. We're going to put this thing into hotspot mode. After we're all done with these updates, we're going to turn off. It's no longer going to be connected to our Wi-Fi, and it is no longer going to be connected to the Internet. Instead, it's going to be its own hotspot, and we will connect to the Raspberry Pi hotspot with our laptop or phone or whatever. And we want to be able to go to a, a, a website. So we're going to go to weeder.local, and we want that to resolve, DNS to resolve that properly so that it actually points at our Raspberry Pi running the app that we've got. So what this does is it lets us actually set up DNS on this thing. Um, and once we're connected, it's going to say anything that ends in .local, so weeder.local is the URL we'll connect to, it will resolve to this 10 dot address. And that 10 dot address is the address of the Raspberry Pi when it's in hotspot mode. Um, next we get down here, this is where we actually say, hey, um, we want to run this application every time it starts up. So what this line says is create a crontab entry. Um, crontab is you know, a way to automate jobs. So whenever it boots up this at reboot, it's going to run this right here. And what it's saying is uh, run the Python script that we copied on there, and it's going to run it as a Flask app. If you're not familiar with Flask, it's an add-on for, uh, it's, it's a library in Python where we are going to be able to run a tiny web server. And uh, it makes our app available not just through the command line like usual, but via a website. So it's going to appear as a little website that we can like choose options and, and tell it to run that way. So the next stuff down here, we're installing a bunch of Flask um, libraries for Python and all the forms and stuff so that it looks right. Uh, down here, this sets up some IP tables. Our Flask app actually runs on port 5000, so we're going to redirect port 80 and 443 to port 5000. And then the last step down here, this is where we're going to get disconnected. Um, expect it unless you're connected you know, directly with an HDMI cable to your Raspberry Pi. At this point, your, your logs are going to stop and you'll have to wait you know, five minutes or something like that. What it does is it restarts our network manager and then it tells it be a network hotspot. And the network's name is going to be Weeder. So when you look at your Wi-Fi lists in your house, uh, you're going to see one called Weeder as soon as this thing finishes booting. And the password to get into it is Let's Weed with a capital L, capital W. And um, this part down here just says every time you reboot, make that your priority. Make it the highest priority Wi-Fi network that you've got. So always be a hotspot from here on out. That means that our Raspberry Pi is essentially disconnected from the Internet. We can still connect to it. Obviously, it's a hotspot. So we can SSH to it or we can access it over um, the, you know, a, a web browser. But it's not going to be connected to the Internet unless we you know, get in and change it. And then the last thing is uh, restart it. So at the end of all of this, you're going to have a fully set up Raspberry Pi that runs the app that you want every time it starts up. It, um, and it will be running as a hotspot, so you can connect to it with your web browser or via SSH and PuTTY, just like you used to, as long as you're connected to that Wi-Fi name called Weeder. So let's give it a couple minutes, and we'll check back in as soon as this setup is done. It's, uh, if we check back over here, it's still in the middle of doing all this setup. You need to go over to your Wi-Fi um, and in ch check that you, you know, log into, um, whoops, <laughs> putty fail. Log into the Wi-Fi called Weeder um, and use the password Let's Weed with a capital L, capital W. So now you're logged in. Um, you can actually go just check that this thing is running. If you pull up a web browser now, I uh, spoiled the surprise here. Uh, here it is. We're going to um, resubmit here. So if we go to weeder.local slash run, this is going to pull up a page for us. Um, we can see that this is our Flask application presented to us via a web browser. So, uh, sorry, our Python application running via Flask on a web browser. So, um, like I said, what we actually did is our Python script that runs this thing is now running through a web browser. So you've got a bunch of options for what kind of test you want to do, what kind of weeds you want to kill, and then uh, how far you want it to travel. 
So um, this shows you that, that it's actually running. Uh, this this weeder.local is being resolved via the DNS running on the Raspberry Pi, and it resolves it to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, and at the um, path slash run, it's where our Python application is, is showing up. Um, so now just take a quick look through these. Uh, this is a normal run. It'll actually try to go kill whatever weeds you've checked down here, and it'll run however far you tell it to go and turn around the number of times that you tell it to turn around. Um, so that's like a full run. This one here is when you want to build your own uh, uh, TF Lite model. You're going to choose this one, and it'll run as far as you tell it to and just take photos. And then you'll have to hand classify those photos into um, you know what sort of plant it's looking at and then retrain the model so that it'll run on what's in your garden. More on that in a, in a later video. Uh, this one just tests that it can take photos, takes three photos, pops them out there on the Raspberry Pi. And then all of these on down are what we're going to do next. These actually just check that you have your pins connected to the Raspberry Pi properly. So if, if we say test lid motor and then I hit submit, uh, in the background here you may be able to hear the, the lid just opened and shut on uh, the, the, actual, uh, t the actual robot. So from, from here on down is what we're going to work with next to make sure that our motors work. So We'll get to that in just a second. Before we jump ahead, I just want to show you the other parts of um, you know that you can access here. So you can also get rid of the word run, and this is going to show us a, a directory of logs. So every time we hit submit, it's going to create a directory out here, and it's going to save whatever output um, it needs to in that in that folder. Now that one did nothing um, because it was it was a simple test. So the other thing that's worth looking at here is um, we can now reconnect to our weeder um, just like we did before. So we're going to pull up PuTTY or SSH if that's what you have instead. And if I load this, what you're going to see is we're actually now going to connect to a host name, weeder.local on port 22. And of course, our DNS resolution comes from the Raspberry Pi, so it will resolve it to itself. And so if I open that, um, yeah, it's, it's a new one. So. Here we are logged in, and we can see just like we did before. Um, you know, there's the nohup.out output. There's the weeder directory that we were just looking at, and inside the weeder directory now, since we've uh, run that lid opening and closing script, there's a there's a log directory where it's going to save all the logs from our runs, and you know the other stuff is still just sitting out there. So this is another way that you can get access to this, and you could use WinSCP or just the SCP command if you're running. Uh, uh, Mac or Linux to copy new files out to this. Since this doesn't have access to the internet anymore, it's not going to be able to go grab things off the internet for you. But you can, of course, copy it over from your laptop if you need to put something else on here. So uh, now that we've got you know this up and running and we can see that these work, we're actually going to go test each one of these motors. So um, 